You did it. Catherick Thorm is no more. The Shadow's grip is broken. Soon, the land shall heal. Not as glad as I am. Nature moves at its own pace. And bestows its bounty when it sees fit. Give it time. A reward shall come to you. When you need it most. Your path leads away from me, I sense. Be safe. Perhaps one day you will see the fruits that your victory has sown here. I can't believe it. I can't believe Aelin is here. And... my father. I heard what happened. What he'd become. By killing him. You set him free. You set Aelin free. And me. A great deal. Catherick Thorm is... was... my father. He raised me to serve Saluna as my mother, rest her soul, had wished. He was everything to me, all my life. When an emissary of Saluna came to our little town, we were elated. Dame Aelin, tell me, do you believe in love at first sight? This was different. Lucky for me, she felt, I understand, it's straight. Then, next I knew I was being jolted awake. I didn't know that then. I found last light within the shadow. By the time Jahira came, I'd, I couldn't tell her who I was. It's all out in the open. I'm grateful for your help, your friendship. What do you know about me? You spoke of my past, being chased by wolves. I told no one about that. Almost no one. But I certainly didn't share that with you. There is nothing I can tell you that you do not already know yourself. They trained you well, trained you hard. Chiseled away any part of you that did not fit their plan. They made you forget. I chose to do that. For the mission to protect Shaz... Secrets. Yes, yes, that is an old song, girl. Your goddess cares more for her precious secrets than she does her devotees. Get to the point. When you freed me, you severed a bond between me and that dog, Thorm. A bond of pain. His, inflicted on me. When I laid eyes on you, I sensed a similar bond. You, tethered to two others. Someplace distant. Let me help you remember. You feel Shadowheart's mind tug at the edges of your own. You know this sensation. She wants you to see whatever is about to be revealed. Your mind joins with Shadowheart's. Something pulls at you both, bringing you elsewhere. It is a common right among Saluna's followers to send their children off into the woods to find their way home. It seems that one child never came back. She was taken. What? Who was that man? You already know. Did you not see yourself in him? Do you not recognize your own blood? My father. That was him. That is him. He lives still. And your mother, too. No. It can't be. I'm an orphan. And who told you that? Your adoptive family? You are not to blame. 
You were young, impressionable. They took you because they wanted to break and remake you. But you are a child no longer. You are a woman. My parents... I need to save them. Your parents are with your abductors. You will need to return to their lair. But be warned. You may have once thought of them as comrades, mentors, friends, even lovers. They will all be enemies now. You have been forewarned for what is to come. But not yet forearmed. I was able to retrieve it before it sank too far into Shah's umbral domain. Shah is quick to discard whatever she has no use for. I think you know that well enough. But I felt it call to me as I took flight. Whatever Shah calls her own, Saluna has equal claim to. They are one and the same, and mirrored. I'll need every advantage, it seems. Thank you. A debt repaid. You returned my life unto me. Now go and claim your own. <sighs> it hurts. Shah torments you still. What a spiteful creature she is. This will not stop until you take action. See that your parents' sacrifices are not in vain. Allow the Moon Maiden to guide you at last. There you are. I have awaited your arrival with great anticipation. Come closer. Feel my voice rattle your bones as I proclaim our victory. Moon Maiden Saluna, hear me. Ketherick Thorn, traitor, apostle of Merkel, is dead at last. My mate, Most High. Darling Isabel is safe and well. Safe and well and return to my embrace. Blessings upon the Slayer of the Wicked One. Gold can buy you baubles. A prayer to the Moon Maiden buys you eternity. My darling Isabel says we will stay allied at your side. I am pleased to hear it. Looking forward to a bit of rest, if I'm honest. It's been a long century. Ah, my... Quite the cosy setup you have here. To my whole life. And I was gullible enough to just believe it. My parents are alive and I have to save them. I think a part of me always knew that. A part that Shah denied to me. Indeed. We'd better press on for now. But before that, there's one thing I need to see to. You will see for yourself soon enough. Just leave it with me. Your dance card is full. Lose a partner. Wonderful. At least Shadowheart is armed with the truth now. May its keen edge draw forth whatever vengeance she desires. So... It's a quest to free Shadowheart's parents, is it? And here I was, worried I'd be the only one with a difficult family reunion waiting in the city. The thing that will decide my fate forevermore. Yes, it's been on my mind. Why? I hadn't really decided on the specifics. What? <laughs> I've obviously thought about it. If I would... <laughs> Of course, I don't even know if I could complete the ritual. It may be impossible, but it certainly is tempting.
What's next? For a dull moment. Here, House of Healing. West, no Boulder's Gate. East, Central Square. Wherever dangers lie ahead. At least the Shadow Curse is one blight we were able to cure. The Absolute's army are on the march, and Baldur's Gate is their target. The curse has been lifted, the lands cleansed of the shadows. Catherick's reign of living death is over. Your courage has been tested, and in this at least, you have triumphed. Sergeant, if you are here, I presume Wern's Rock is secure, and preparations for my inauguration are complete. No, Lord Gortash. We were interrupted. Another quake in the lower city. More severe this time. So you came cowering to my chambers? I'm flattered, Sergeant. But even I cannot command natural phenomena to cease. Forgive me, my lord, but there is panic in the streets. The people are afraid. Perhaps the people would be calm if you kept your nerve. I expect better from the Flaming Fist than to run scared from a slight tremor in the earth. Get back to your duties. Duties, duties, duties. Patrolling and saluting and following and bowing and scraping and yes, sir, no, sir. Rip and cut your throat, sir. Your plan is falling apart, Lordling. Give me a reason not to cut you to ribbons. Control yourself, Orin. We need to focus on reuniting the stones or the brain will break free. These quakes are just the start. Neither of us expected the prison bearers to kill Ketherick. They'll be traveling to the city. Let's make sure we give them a Baldurian welcome. My prodigal bloodkin is among them. They live? <laughs> Barely. I made mince of their ugly mind matter. And if they dare return, I will strip out their offal.
Beyond the campsite, the city waits in uneasy silence, one sleep away. Painful truths have been thrust upon Shadowheart. I believe she is strong enough to endure. If you have business to conclude before we march, have it done. The road to Baldur's Gate is long, and the city needs us. Shadow Heart. She's been jerked around so much. It does not surprise me that Shadow Heart's faith was based on a lie. Deception. I take no pleasure in his passing. Whatever faults he may have had, Ketherick was a great leader. Of course. He ruled Moonrise for centuries. That in itself deserves respect. I believe he was an honorable man, but the gods used him as their plaything. First, Shah and her sister, then the three behind the Absolute. I sympathize. It is a sharp mind that feels sympathy for one who suffers unnecessarily, not a soft heart. I saw strength in Ketherick that had been diluted by pain, but I will never forgive him for handing me to Orin. For that, <laughs> I hope Merkel hollows out his bones and lets them be dust. A true soul came to my city preaching a message of togetherness. Menzoberanzen is not fertile ground for such messages. I killed them and hanged their bodies. In I would have picked prettier corpses if my intentions had been aesthetic. I was not content with the warning, though. I intended to wage war on their insolent god. Even as the flesh sagged and sloughed away from their eyeless skulls, their audacity infuriated me. I had to know where they came from. <sighs> and whoever sent them was counting on my curiosity overcoming my caution. Yes. All it took was a simple act of necromancy, and the corpses told me where I needed to strike. Moonrise Towers. It is never safe to point out my shortcomings, Iblith. 
But in this instance, you are correct. Moonrise is the site of my greatest failure. As it turned out, to my shame. I was defeated without even drawing my weapon. I came to Moonrise with a retinue of warriors and assassins, the best House Bane Ray had to offer. I expected a battle, but found a fully laden feast table. <sighs> Ketherick expected us, expected me, and I fell for his flattery. I recognize my flaws. Pride is certainly among them. Ketherick proposed an alliance between Moonrise and Mensa Baranzen. I admit I was captivated by him. He invited me to the head of his table. It was not the food I should have been wearing. It was the pale woman at the foot of the table. Orin the Red. We had barely begun to eat when she spoke for the first time. I only caught one word, my name. Then, quick as lightning, she climbed onto the table, a dagger in each hand, and skipped toward me, slicing the throats out of my men as she passed them. Few things frightened me. Orin is one of them. Ketherick held me still, his hand on my shoulder, the grip tight enough to crack the bone. When Orin stood before me, she touched the dagger to my eye, drawing out a tear of blood. I want this one, she said. Ketherick nodded his permission, and I was taken below. You've seen the horrors of the colony. Orin kept me there for days. She forced me to watch as my men were processed. Some for food, others as thralls. And then she placed the tadpole in my eye herself. I deserved it. I was passive, weak, proud. You know the rest as well as I do. There were massacres before the grove. Religious communities, mostly. Those who refused to convert. Then there was you, and now there is freedom. <sighs> Soon there will be vengeance. Whatever you need, you there's nothing that would give me greater pleasure. Mm. More excited than I've been in months. I can't tell you how curious I am to learn more about the crown controlling that elder brain. Believe me when I say how important this could be for me, for both of us. Potentially life-saving, so long as we can learn how it could be taken and... No matter. After all. The gate is closed, as is Casador. Casador and his right of profane ascension. An imperious soiree, attended by devils and spawn alike. A grand ceremony to honor one exalted vampiric master. And elevate him to an unfathomable station. To place him in a position of such esteem. The w of course I envy him. Why wouldn't I? The problem with what Cazador has done is that he did it to me. 
if the time comes and I can stay one move ahead of him, I'll take his place before his blood can hit the floor. <laughs> Doesn't it sound delightful? After 200 years of shit, pure shit, I think I deserve something better. Look, I appreciate that. I'm very grateful, of course. All I'm saying is, let's be clever about it. If an opportunity arises for me to become a more magnificent bastard than I already am, why turn it down? Let's find out more about the ritual before we waltz into Cazador's front door. If we track down my old comrades, the other spawn, we may discover more. My, my, you sweetheart. Then there isn't a moment to waste. If we don't find my brethren, they'll find us. Likely with bared fang. We should get to them first. Unless Cazador's change their orders, they'll be... Ah, my favorite, my sweet. There is nothing I'd like more. I'll come to you tonight. And this time, I'll make sure I'm quiet. We don't want to disturb your rest. Later on, when we are... At rest, I will eat you right up. Just enough to give me strength, and just enough to leave you wishing for more. Looking forward to a bit of rest, if I'm honest. Be gone, friend. I have a darling to adore. Our thoughts are as one, my friend. You must face the Chosen of Bane and Baal. I will do my part to see them laid low. of the last days weigh heavily upon you. Sleep's rest is slow to come to one whose mind is so full. The Absolute is not a god, but an elder brain controlled by the Chosen of the Dead Three. All who carry the tadpole of this would have been with his together, and what will you liberate the true souls from their parasites and their A thrill courses through you at the thought. You will not have long to wait, but sleep is not for you. your way to the portal. I need your help.
me. I'm under attack. to the skull. Hurry! I can't hold them back alone.
don't look at me like that. I am a mind flayer. Yes. Of all the things to be indebted to, a bloody mind flayer. I suppose it was considerate of you not to bring it up before. And I ask that you do not judge me for it now. It's like I said before. I'm an adventurer. I came from Baldur's Gate, though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance. I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers on a search for treasure. To a colony of mind slayers who caught me, changed me into what I am now. For years, I served the Elder Brain. The one you know as the Absolute. I was a thrall like any other, but I was fortunate. I broke free and started a new life in my old city. I sustained myself on criminals. Unglamorous, but there are plenty of them. Rarely missed. And they fueled me while I did my work. I had the good fortune to meet Duke Stelmay. We formed a partnership, and through her, I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield, the largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People refer to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence, though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy for a while, until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself, Lord Gortash. He tore me from my home and brought me back to the brain where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call the Emperor. The name was intended as a slight, to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've become. Indeed, his hubris knows no bounds. To enslave me, that was his nature. I shall look forward to sharing his downfall with you. Rather them than potential future allies like you. We fought to tame Prince Orpheus, the son of Gif herself. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt Hive Mind Communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus' his mother to bring about the fall of the Illithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him, and that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus' his mother left, a usurper took her place. Vlakith declared herself Queen of the Githyanki. Vlakith wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard within this prison. Bound by infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never would. They were close to breaking my hold on that prince. And if they had succeeded, we would be lost. I am relieved. You have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them. Alone, Orpheus will be much easier to control. Most certainly Orpheus. He is a threat to her reign. Some Githyanki still revere him in defiance of their teachings. She kept him this way because she was reluctant to eradicate such power. If the Githyanki ever find out what she has done, there will be civil war. Blacketh will be finished. No. Gortash sent me on a mission to retrieve the Astral Prison. I was one of many. How Gortash or the other Chosen learned of its existence. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. And found, I realized what the prison was for. While my body was within the prison's bound, all I needed to do was subdue Orpheus 
and find allies in the outer world. You. That would be a terrible idea. The moment he is free, he will attack you. Even though he is subdued, you feel Orpheus's revulsion. A pulsing hatred that cannot be contained. The Emperor is telling the truth. You carry a tadpole. As far as Orpheus is concerned, I'm glad you think so. My original body would... As an Alithid, I have fought. I am pleased to... I've been stuck. The transfer... Would you like to do it? Would you like... Even as you say the word... I felt... It wants to evolve, but it cannot do so alone. It must commune with another. A wave of disappointment, stronger than any you've ever felt. And then... Stillness. You are not ready yet. It has enough vitality to further your evolution. Perhaps you will be more inclined to try it when you see more of what our enemy can do. But we mustn't lose. You heard? We mustn't. Consider using the tadpole. Time to get going. There is nothing further I can do for you right now. So, there's been a mind flayer inside the artifact, or astral prism, the whole time we've had it. The more I learn, the less I understand just why I was sent to retrieve that thing. I do not serve Shah anymore. But I digress. Did you want something? Be honest. What do you think of the new look? Well... I'm glad someone does. Perhaps I'll get used to it. I have a lot to get used to right now. Gods. A mind flayer's been getting their tentacles all over our dreams this whole time. I'm really not sure about putting any trust at all in this thing. I've got my eyes on the Emperor, and Karlak doesn't blink. As you approach Minthara, you feel her mind reaching out to yours, tentative and curious. Sorry, old habits. I did not ask permission. When we first met, before Moonrise, I intruded on your thoughts without hesitation. I would not do that again, unless I had reason to think you were hiding something from me. And I do not. I did not think we would ever share anything more than an uneasy alliance, born of... I was wrong. A deeper bond has grown between us. I trust you. But I would like to touch your thoughts again, now that my mind is my own. May I? Of course, I do not hide anything from you. When the Absolute fell silent, I thought I would be alone. I expected to spend my days among surface dwellers who knew nothing of my culture. 
I did not expect to meet another outcast from the Underdark who understood me. I did not expect you. You should be. On those rare occasions when people have surprised me in the past, I received new scars to remember them by. You are different. A pleasant surprise. One of the first in my long life. Before the Absolute, I lived a life of certainties. I also knew that my inherited privilege came with a cost. I could not enjoy the taste of food for fear of poisoning. In spite of the danger, I was happy now. Nothing is certain. Without Lolth, without the Absolute, without my home, I do not know myself. But you do, I think. Show me myself through your eyes. Let me see what I am to you. She joins her thoughts with yours, and you are as one. You share in her strength of mind and formidable will. As doubts cluster in swarms, and the thickest is around her sense of self. What does she see? Her mind cools. Acceptance is colored by disappointment. We need to trust one another if we are to survive. But I want more from you than that. I want all of you. Now you can have me instead. As you wish. It is a rare occasion when I do not get what I want. But you have shown your worth in many ways. I will be satisfied to have you as an ally. Shadowheart looks different. A change of diet, perhaps? There's no more radiant sight than that of someone who's learned to love themselves anew. Shadowed in name, but no longer in spirit. It suits her. Oh, we have a new look for a new shadow heart. Nice as it is, she still doesn't have the best hair in the camp. destroy and Voss would set free. It is Orpheus, the blood of the mother, the prince of the comet. Listen close. Long ago, Tiamat, the first Vlacketh of many, Orpheus, it was killed. Should Orpheus go free, we meet every one if a gift. I was concerned when I saw Shadowheart creeping about with a blade in the dead of night, but it was just to cut her hair, it seems. It suits her. If you have business to conclude before we... The road in the city needs us.
not to blame.